<clears throat> Good morning and thank you for joining together this morning <clears throat> as we open our hearts to the Word of God to strengthen our spirits and help us keep holy the Lord's Day. Uh, those who are gathering from outside our parish community, uh, we welcome you. Know that uh, you are embraced by our community and you honor us by your presence. On Friday, late afternoon and evening and Saturday, um, Bishop Barber had given delegation to pastors to confer the sacrament of confirmation in his name, given the unusual circumstances that we're in. And so we had nearly 60 confirmation candidates that were confirmed at um, uh, six different services. The beautiful ceremonies, um, in spite of the, uh, the heat and the uh, smoke, we were uh, safely distanced from one another and uh, parents and godparents were uh, gathered uh, to support their children. Those youth were answering for themselves and before the community the question that Jesus asked his disciples in this morning's gospel, who do people say I am? And we can ask ourselves the same question, who do you say Jesus is? Now don't answer the question quickly, take your time. As Christians, we're often tempted to fall back on religious language we've inherited when we're asked about our faith lives, language we know very well, we could recite it in our sleep, or we're tempted not to answer the question at all. We dodge and evade, afraid of offending anyone whose perspective differs from ours. So wait a while, let that question linger as we hear the word of God and reflect together from your domestic church, your own home. Who do you say Jesus is? And how is he dwelling with you there in your home? Who has he been to you in the past? Who do you hope he will be in the future? Your prayers this morning are requested for Ed Bennett, who died this week following complications from surgery. Ed was a few months shy of his 100th birthday. Ed was an inspiration to everyone who knew him. He was a faithful member of the Knights of Columbus, attended every event, every banquet, every beat, every celebration. If you didn't know Ed personally, you saw him because he was an avid walker and walked the main streets of Lafayette every day for miles. He had an unbelievably youthful spirit. He was a true gentleman. He was kind to everyone he met. Uh, he, our community uh, is at a loss with the loss of that great man. So let's keep that in our prayers and thank God for uh, the life, uh, almost a century of a beautiful life. The uh, Faring, uh, Farrell and Irving family will be our public voice in our responses to the prayers today, but you pray them at home uh, with us, the music, as well as the prayer responses. And we'll begin with a musical prelude in this place.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. In today's gospel, our Lord gives Peter the power to exercise authority in the community of the disciples that formed around Jesus and his message. This was a gift given, not because of Peter's strength or capabilities, but in spite of his weakness, he was to rely ultimately upon the power of God. Let us ask the Lord to enable us to live the gospel in spite of our failures as we renew our faith and seek God's mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, in you we find freedom and fullness of redemption. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us to live in the truth of your saving word. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Living God, you sent your Son among us to reveal your wisdom and make known your ways. Increase our faith that we may confess Jesus as your Son, take up his work on earth, and trust his promise to sustain the church. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The prophet Isaiah often spoke warnings, oracles, against Judah's pagan neighbors, as we would expect. But Isaiah also denounced Jerusalem and its corrupt leaders. Our first passage predicts the firing of an official of the king's court and his replacement by a leader who will remind everyone of King David and their glorious past. This passage comes at an interesting time with our national election looming in the near future. I invite Mike and Sarah to deliver the first scripture for us. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to Shebna, master of the palace, I will thrust you from your office and pull you down from your station. On that day, I will summon my servant Eliakim, son of Hilkiah, and I will clothe him with your robe and gird him with your sash and give over to him your authority. He shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. I will place the key of the house of David on Eliakim's shoulder when he opens, no one shall shut. When he shuts, no one shall open. I will fix him like a peg in a sure spot to be a place of honor for his family. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. I thank you, Lord, with all my heart. You have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels, I will bless you. I will adore before your holy temple. Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. I thank you for your faithfulness and love, which excel all we ever knew of you. On the day I called, you answered. You increased the strength of my soul. Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. The Lord is high yet looks on the lowly, and the haughty God knows from afar. Your love, O Lord, is eternal. Discard not the work of your hands. Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. In his writings, St. Paul asked the question several times, who can know the mind of God? As we face these natural disasters of firestorms and pandemic, all of us wonder about God's plan and why things are happening. Sometimes all we as mere mortals can do is stand in humility and awe before God, even as we beg for an end to these disasters. I invite Sally Soleil to deliver our second scripture. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How inscrutable are his judgments and how unsearchable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor or who has given the Lord anything that he may be repaid? For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia. 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 Hallelujah. 
Brothers and sisters, the Lord is with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. A reading from the good news according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Lord. Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi, and he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And Jesus said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus said to him in reply, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then Jesus strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. For our salvation, the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Let me begin with a story from a Buddhist teacher. An old man was visiting the city for the first time. He had never been to school. In fact, he had never left the remote mountain village of his childhood. He worked hard his long life to provide for his family and was now enjoying his first visit to his children's modern home in the city. One day while walking through the city, the old man heard a sound that stung his ears. He never heard such an awful noise in his quiet mountain village. He followed the grating sound to a little room in the back of a house. A small boy was practicing the violin and badly. The old man's son explained to him what a violin was, and the old man decided he never wanted to hear such a horrible thing again. The next day, the old man was exploring another part of the city when he heard a most enchanting melody. He followed the sound to its source. He finally came to the small studio of a woman who was playing a sonata on a violin. The old man immediately realized his mistake. The terrible sound he had heard the day before wasn't the fault of the instrument or the fault of that boy. The boy still had much to learn in order to realize the possibilities of the instrument. In the hands of a true maestro, a violin was a wondrous thing. The third day, walking through the city, the old man heard a sound that surpassed in its beauty the music he heard the day before. It was a sound more beautiful than the cascade of the mountain streams in spring, the autumn wind in the mountain groves, the silence in the mountain hollows on a still winter's night. The old man's heart had never been so moved. Again, he followed the music until he came to a large hall. An orchestra was playing a symphony. Then the wise old man understood. Strife and conflict aren't caused by religion or belief, he realized. Such division is the result of the student who had not learned the lessons of faith well. The true gift of God was first to learn to become a master of one's own instrument and then to put those skills at the service of other players to create the most beautiful of sounds. This morning's scripture, both the Old Testament and the Gospel, invite us to consider the importance of authority and how it's exercised. The prophet Isaiah speaks for God to Shebna, a high court official to King Hezekiah. Shebna's authority was vast but his personal ambitions, his thirst for power, and his attempts to build up his own reputation earned him the prophet's wrath. An Ethiopian proverb says, the smaller the lizard, the greater its ambition to become a crocodile. Shebna's authority was taken away from him 
and the keys, which were a symbol of his authority, were given to another who would rule with integrity and honor. In the gospel, Jesus takes a poll of his disciples. Who do people say that I am? They offer a variety of responses, but it's only Peter who nails it. You are the Messiah, the son of the living God. That word Messiah was a loaded word for the Jewish people. They believed that God would send an anointed king who would be the spearhead of the movement that would free Israel from oppression and bring justice and peace to the world at last. So Peter got it right with an insight given him by God. And Jesus entrusted to him the keys to the kingdom, symbols of authority and power. But we know only too well from the testimony of the scriptures that power corrupts. Peter and the disciples will have many lessons to learn about the power entrusted to them. They'll have arguments about who's the greatest. They'll try to outdo each other in rank and status. They'll even abandon Jesus in his hour of need out of fear of earthly authorities. In many ways, they were like the little boy playing the violin badly. They just didn't know how to handle the instrument, how to wield authority in the manner of Jesus, who came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for the many. And isn't that the struggle about power and authority playing itself out on the world stage today? What else is the refusal to wear a mask and follow the simple guidelines of safe distancing and hand washing as the only way short of a vaccine to end this epidemic? Isn't that struggle over legitimate authority evident in fellow citizens who refuse to adhere to medical advices because you're impinging on my freedom and you have no right to tell me what to do? Surely it's a misguided sense of autonomy and individualism contradicting our motto, one nation under God. The struggle is played out in national tensions when political parties refuse to cooperate for the common good, when elected officials won't share the power entrusted to them. And the church herself has many scriptural lessons about authentic authority yet to learn, as Pope Francis calls for a greater synodality, that process of fraternal collaboration and discernment, seeking the voice of the Holy Spirit manifested throughout the entire body of Christ and all its members endowed with the Holy Spirit. Jesus establishes his church on the simple, heartfelt faith of each player and the individual player's generosity in coming together with others and putting the mastery of his or her own instrument at the service of all. Christ calls each of us to be a rock of his church, to bring his love, justice, and mercy to whatever place we can, one small act of kindness at a time. He entrusts to each one of us those keys to heaven, to unlock through the faith we live and the work of our lives, the presence of God in our world. Faith is God's invitation to play the music of his justice and mercy, of hope and compassion for a despairing and broken world. Our love and care for family and friends, our dedication to the cause of what is right and just, our taking the first step toward reconciliation and forgiveness, our simplest act of kindness and generosity. These are our confessions of faith in Jesus as the Messiah and Redeemer. Let us profess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. In our prayers, let us expand our awareness of the needs around us. I invite Dennis and Maria Roland to lead us in our petitions. That all who join with Peter in confessing Jesus as the Messiah may stand firm on the rock of our faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That those who hold the keys of authority in the world, in government, and politics may work to establish a reign of justice and peace and an end to war, hatred, and violence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the racial tensions <clears throat> being experienced in cities throughout our country may give way to peaceful resolution and an end to discrimination. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That our Paris children, teens and college students who are returning to school may grow as Christ did in wisdom and grace and a willing desire to learn the ways of loving service toward others and with patience and strength to cope with the unusual challenges this school year presents. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That our firefighters be kept safe <clears throat> and that those whose lives are devastated by fires ravaging our state may receive the help and support they need to rebuild their homes and their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That those who suffer and who question the ways of God may find in us some sign of the glory of the cross. And for the sick, especially Ludwig, Melianic, Sushama, Krishner, Helen, McKenna, Steve Kowalski, Barbara Worsham, and those suffering from the coronavirus, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have come through death to the doors of God's kingdom, may they be welcomed at the eternal banquet, especially those who have died from coronavirus and Ed Bennett. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. In silence, let us bring our personal needs and intentions to God. Pour out your spirit upon us, O God, that we may join with Simon Peter in confessing Jesus as our Messiah and Lord. Build us into the living stones of your church, standing firm upon one foundation, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us unite all our prayers into one as we pray in the words that Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy, we may be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now, now and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not upon our sins or our misuse of the authority you have entrusted to us, but look on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. We invite those who are at home with their family to share that peace with one another as those of us alone extend it from our hearts to the hearts of all of you. While we cannot gather around the Lord's table together at this time, we know that the Lord is always with us. And so let us pray a prayer of spiritual communion, inviting him into our hearts and lives. My, My Jesus, Jesus, I believe, I believe that, that you are present in the most holy sacrament. sacrament. I, I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into, into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you and to your mystical body throughout the world. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Complete within us, O Lord, the healing work of your mercy, and by your grace transform and strengthen us, that we may please you in all that we do. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining together in prayer this morning, and thanks to our readers and lectors and those who work behind the scenes to make our virtual gathering possible. I'll share communion outside the front doors of the church this morning at 1030 and 1230 for those who would wish to receive. You can drive to the parking lot in front of the church where you park your car and walk to the doors of the church, lining up with the required distancing and face masks. Stay in touch with us through our parish website and our uh, newsletter, The Timely Perpetuan. And thanks for your financial support of the parish at this difficult time when we can't gather publicly. Uh, you can make contributions through our parish website or directly at the office. I recently had a Zoom meeting with our parish finance council to review and discuss our uh, parish finances. Uh, they'll be providing a formal parish report in the coming weeks, but wanted me to uh, communicate that through your generosity, the parish has been able to meet all our financial commitments during this difficult time. Donations, whether made by electronic giving or envelopes dropped off at the church, have stabilized, and we are bringing back staff as we slowly expand our ministry and parish community programs and services. Uh, so thank you for your support and look for more information in the coming weeks. A uh, couple of things uh, that are coming up. Uh, one uh, is that you've seen a lot of work around uh, the area by PG&E. Uh, they're using this time as an opportunity uh, to make some uh, long delayed improvements. Uh, they've requested, because we have a large parking lot on the, by the upper field, uh, to rent that space from us for the next few weeks for their equipment at the end of each workday. Uh, and I've agreed uh, uh, to do that with them. It'll bring finance, financial benefit to us. And since uh, school is being done uh, with distance learning, the upper parking lot is uh, open um, all day. So it won't be an inconvenience uh, to the parish or our ministries in any way. And then um, our, our Oktoberfest would ordinarily be coming up very soon. Obviously, uh, such a large gathering wouldn't be possible, but it's always been uh, such a great event for many, many years. So the Oktoberfest committee has assured me that they're working on a way to still celebrate Oktoberfest with a creative uh, way of doing it. I don't have details of their uh, plans yet, but I look forward to uh, hearing from uh, Mike and Sarah and others on the committee about ways we can still have fun, still raise some funds uh, for their community, and still celebrate that Oktoberfest. On Wednesdays at our weekly town hall gathering at seven o'clock, we've been dealing with many topics of interest for the past four months. 
art and literature, social issues of racism, prejudice, ecology, and care for the earth, biblical prophecy, the nature of the coronavirus itself, and dialogue with some of the doctors in our parish. This week, we'll lighten up a bit and add some humor. Some of my favorite YouTubes, crazy animal videos, and uh, some fun comedians. Milton Burl once said, laughter is an instant vacation. So if you weren't able to go on vacation this summer, then join us for a one hour vacation on Wednesday at seven o'clock uh, for a few laughs. And if you have any jokes or video links that you wanna to send to me to possibly use, I'm happy to receive them from you. Make sure they're clean. Uh, on Thursday, S Sister Laurel is offering a Bible study program on the Gospel of Mark from 10 to 11.30. It's open to anyone and uses the Zoom platform, which can be accessed through the parish website. Friday mornings, a group of parishioners join at 10 o'clock uh, via Zoom to pray the rosary, open to every, everyone in the parish. And the women's ministry, of course, still have their, has their open offer for someone who might need an errand run or a food delivery. So we'll close uh, listening to a prelude entitled, Upon This Rock. to receive God's blessing. The Lord has set you firm within his church. 
which he built upon the rock of Peter's faith. May God give you a faith that never falters. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Have a wonderful Sunday, everyone.